It's estimated for every face there are seven matches somewhere in the world. He actually could do a murder and that one could take the blame. <laughs> Millions of people across the globe are now using websites and social media to search for their doppelgangers. Oh my god! It's so weird! This trend has grabbed the attention of a team of British scientists who are leaders in the field of twin studies. What we want to do is get these people in a laboratory situation and say, how close to twins can these people be? They want to find out how physically alike these strangers really are. And we got a score for about 81% similarity. And see whether these similarities are more than skin deep. You are related, roughly of the order of fourth cousins. Seven pairs of twin strangers have agreed to undertake a series of tests. I would have thought this is the same nose. <laughs> Are you sure you're not sisters? I think the best I've seen so far, they've got the same eyes, same nose, same lips. They're going to battle it out to see how far their similarities go. Sarah's a little bit competitive. She wants us to win. We don't actually think we look that much alike, but other people do. I think we have the strongest luck. But who will be crowned the most identical of them all? Who are you talking to? I'm talking to you. <laughs> I'm Neil. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Pairs of doppelgangers from all over the world are meeting in London. Yeah, I think we look really alike. Not far off twins, I suppose. My first name is actually William, but his first name is Billy, and I've gone by Billy my whole life. I've always wanted a twin. <laughs> I'm hoping they'd be just like me, so we'd get on and we'd like to do the same things. I just signed up for a website for fun, and suddenly I'm sitting here in a cab just waiting to meet my doppelganger. It's weird. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> so weird. <laughs> They've been invited to the Department of Twin Research, King's College, London. It's crazy, like, me and Sarah definitely look 100% more like than some of the actual twins here. Very similar nose and cheeks and, like, shape of the eye. Like, even if we Snapchat, I'm like, oh, she looks like me there. <laughs> These identical strangers are here to take part in a unique scientific experiment that ultimately will find out which of them is the most identical. The experiment is led by one of the world's leading experts in twins, Professor Tim Spector. Very little to tell in terms of the actual colour between them. Recently, it's the world of doppelgangers that's caught Professor Spector's attention. I came across this when, on Twitter, this picture was posted of a couple of ginger-haired gentlemen who happened to sit next to each other on an aeroplane, who looked to me like identical twins. The fact that two people with very different genes could come together through a whole series of biological events to create the impression of being a clone, I think, is absolutely fascinating. People say, I look a bit like Gary Lineker. Professor Spector has carried out a series of tests on a pair of actual identical twins, one of 12,000 sets on his books. These are very similar, so you'd need computer programs to tell them apart. We have lovely eyes, Tim. I think they're mesmerizing. Thank you, Thank Tim you. Spector. Their results will be used as the benchmark to measure how identical the doppelganger pairs are. The maximum score they could get would be like the identical twins. It'd be about 90, 95%. In the tests, the pair's faces will be compared in two dimensions. About 154 points on there. And using cutting-edge three-dimensional science. I mean, you could put one of those over the top of the other and you'd hardly notice any difference. Next, as humans read faces differently to computers, 100 people will rate how alike the doppelgangers are. And their smile is the same. And finally, a DNA test to see if their similarities are down to more than chance. Do you think we are related? Maybe, who knows? I can't wait to see what people think. Definitely going to be top three. Top two. Top two, yeah. Top two at least. It may sound a bit like a competition. Well, apparently we are in a competition. Wow.
One person competing in the experiment is 32-year-old Darren, a nightclub assistant manager from Glasgow. He's still to meet his doppelganger in person, but they first connected on social media. My friend Gary um, sent me a picture on, from Instagram of David and says, oh, I found your twin. <laughs> if I had a twin, that would be it, definitely. Over 400 miles south in London is 30-year-old David. He is a former nightclub manager from Poland. Basically, Darren posted it, his picture next to mine. So there you go. Well, my first reaction was, what the actual fuck, basically? It doesn't smell a lot. And I think I generally smell quite a lot in photographs. There's like hundreds of them. He's Sorry? got th 387 pictures. So look, smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. And the pictures where he doesn't smile is when he looks very similar. Oh, my God! Looks so spot on. Darren and David don't just look alike and have the same jobs. There are other parallels in their lives. I do have a pamper regime um, of exfoliating, moisturising. I do use my hair gels, my hairsprays, um, teeth whitening things. Fashion is a huge part of my life. When I was young, I'd rather buy a designer pair of shoes than pay my rent. And there's one other significant similarity Darren and David share. So I guess you have to be blind not to see that, you know, I like men. I'm 100% key. But looking at their photos, it can be open to interpretation. Do you think that he's key? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Don't know. <laughs> Is he gay? He is. He is. Oh, well, my God. You don't have to be blind not to notice that. He looks hot in his Scottish kilt get-up, look. Yeah, he does. You can't really fancy him, though, can you? No, no, no. I would rather sleep with a woman than <laughs> with someone who looks like <laughs> me. Before they start their tests, Darren and David have arranged to meet face-to-face. In today's world, doppelgangers are finding each other online through photographs. Perfect. And these images are the basis for the first of the tests at St. Thomas's Hospital. We start by analyzing the two-dimensional structure of people's faces. I place 154 different points around the face. So there are about 30 points that outline the lips and maybe 20 points that outline the nose. Put them all into a computer. And these final scores um, tell us really how much do two pictures look alike of two different people? Perfect. OK. Thanks very much. I've never been called perfect before. <laughs> Waiting to see if they're winners or losers in the look-alike stakes are Neil and John. Their doppelganger story starts in Braintree, Essex. It's where 70-year-old Neil, a former vicar, retired so he could be close to his daughter. Neil was a stranger in town or so he thought. I was quite surprised when, walking around the streets, I saw people wave to me. I thought, well, this must be a very friendly town. Then we went to the cafe in the centre of town. The manager said to me, hello, John, how are you? So I said to him, I'm not called John, I'm called Neil. Anyway, eventually, it all unravelled when we um, went on a trip. John, a 75-year-old retired headmaster, was taking a trip with a local history group, during which he first met Neil in person. I made my way along the middle of the bus, and as I went, Neil leant forward and he said, excuse me, he said, but you must be John Jemison. When I saw him, I knew instantly why it was he wanted to speak to me, because there I was looking in a mirror. Our physical similarities are seen by others more than they are by us. When I look at myself in the mirror, I don't see John. I think we're being called him. All right, we are. And I look in the mirror as little as I possibly can. Understandably, isn't it? <laughs> With his features. <laughs> Now it's science's turn to judge just how similar Neil and John are in two-dimensional photographs. Let's look at the eyes, and I think 
These are kind of very similar. amazingly similar. Yeah, they are. And we got a score for about 81% similarity on God, that. This is close to what we're getting on our identical twin scores. Oh, really? Gosh. Yeah. If you weren't related, it'd be about zero. And if you were identical twins, it'd be about 90, 95%. So to get 80, my goodness. That's yeah, pretty strong. Five. You look at your left eye, you've both got this rather asymmetrical yeah. epicanthic fold here. But it's not just that fold, but the fact that it's not the same in the other eye. Right. Let's go on to the mouth now, and that's a very high correlation. 93%. That's a, a surprise. We think uh, the similarities between our life experiences that are the most striking thing. It's extraordinary. Same teaching, training, college. We've both become RE teachers. Now I finished up as a head, he finished up as a vicar. We both have sons who play the didgeridoo. Both asked our wives to marry us after a very short time of knowing them. We discovered we were both co-op bank members. Clearly we have the same values right down to where we bank. Yes, but apart from that, um, we're different. <laughs> <laughs> to me, you're nearly uh, as identical as the twins we see every week. Kind of spooky. But, it is, isn't but, it? And just looking at you now, you've got the same pose. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, um, these are... Uh, uh, we fold our arms the same way. Not everyone does. <laughs> Some people fold it, but I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> It's a flying start for John and Neil, and a challenge to the other pairs of doppelgangers as to which of them will be crowned the most similar. Well, I think we have the same colour eyebrows. <laughs> well, I'm just going to get grab a coffee, and he's coming with me, and people are, like, staring at it, shocked. She's turning, like, doing something, I'm like, oh, that looks like me. Do you know, it looks like a reflection. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to you. <laughs> I'm Neil. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel so weird about myself, I guess. <laughs> Knowing that there's another one out there. I'm sorry about the confusion. Uh, uh, it frequently happens. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> what is your favourite food? Pasta. Oh my god. <laughs> you too. <laughs> but I like hamburgers. Me too. But you said you didn't like meat. It's salmon sushi. Yeah. I love salmon and seafood and she loves salmon. Hello. Well. It's not meat. It's meat. Obviously it's meat, of course, right? It's beef. But it's like so many things in there that it's not classic beef. It's not a piece of steak. So I'm not gonna take you, you out for a fine Chateaubriand one day. Yes, you will. A team of scientists at St Thomas's Hospital London are searching for the world's most identical strangers. Three, two, one. Seven pairs of doppelgangers have been invited to take part in a series of scientific tests. This is a world first. No one has actually looked to see the people who look very similar facially share other factors in common. So who's who? Go on the top one. That's so okay. freaky. It's said the chances of finding your twin stranger are one in a billion. Today, Darren and David are beating those odds. They're meeting in person. I just arrived in London and I'm on my way to meet David. I feel anxious and very excited as well. Well, I do get, you know, the butterflies they usually get uh, before a date. I'm going to reschedule it for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, it's so surreal. <laughs> that is weird. <laughs> How are you? You look like someone I know. <laughs> I Hi, Darren. Like How are you? Yeah. Similar. It's so weird. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Bizarre looking at you. The middle of the face, but the eyes and the forehead is so yeah. similar. And your wrinkles that you have, it's like three lines, and I have three lines. No, I see four. No, three. <laughs> okay, three in small ones on the yeah. side. But yeah, I <laughs> know really. Just me being a bitch. <laughs> that is the weirdest feeling I've had ever. Just walking into a room and seeing something that's just absolute double. And I don't have as many wrinkles around the eyes as you do. That's what I thought you It's because of this. No, it's because of the smiling. Because you smile like mm -hmm. your life away on a daily basis. <laughs> it's so surreal. It's like basically talking to myself. 
Well, I don't understand you. I was worried that I won't understand you. Yeah. I'm trying to slow down. Yeah, just, you know, <laughs> turn it down. If you need a piece of paper and a pen, let me know. Drop it, John. Yeah. <laughs> or text me. <laughs> <laughs> it's an excuse to get your number. <laughs> um, I think from speaking to him, he dropped a line about getting my phone number. If not, I'm confused. <laughs> Who's the better looking one? I'd say myself, if I had David's eyebrows, I'd be perfect. <laughs> Hello, guys. Come on through. Well, let's get you started. It's now time for David and Darren to begin the first in their series of tests. I look at him like the cute version of me, like he smiles. Stop smiling. All right. Like all the pairs, they'll be scored. The duo with the highest points in all the tests will be deemed the most identical. When when you look at me, you don't really want to talk to me because I have that angry me. look, yeah. Stand off face. This is just... Oh, it's... Sorry. Ah, too late. So, what you want to look at, what happens when you ask to smile, OK? So, there's a bit of a difference, perhaps a bit more genuine smile on da Darren's. Uh, around his eyes, you know, you've got those smile lines. Uh, let's go to the, the mouth, which was a really high... 89%. On a photo, they're as pretty much as similar as you can get. Let's look at the nose next and... Which one's it... mine? <laughs> well, you tell us. That's mine. That one? That one. That's another one. We can't tell the difference either. We come up with a, a stunning score of a 90% agreement, which is pretty much as good as identical twins for your noses. I didn't see the difference at all. You think we're going to win? We'll see, but I have a good feeling. With the advent of social media, the experiment's tapping into the global trend of people searching for their identical stranger. People like 20-year-old recruitment consultant Fiorella from East London, who's on a quest to find her doppelganger. I'm mixed race. I'm half Mozambican and half Italian. I have loads of siblings. <laughs> Rodrigo, Alessandro, Melissa, Enrico, Luna. It just goes on and on. It's like the alphabet, you know, A, B, C, D, <laughs> F, G. I don't look like any of my siblings. Sometimes I think I'm adopted or I was swapped in the hospital, like my mother says. That is the main reason I've been looking for my doppelganger. What if I find someone that looks like me in another part of the world? Fiorella signed up to a website which helps to connect people looking for their double. She's uploaded her picture and she has to give details about her face. It asks you to select a nose type. I mean, I've got a big potato of a nose. Over 4,000 miles away in Jefferson City, Missouri, in the heart of America's Midwest, live someone else looking for her identical stranger. It's not cold. 22-year-old mum and customer service rep, Ambrosia. Oh, my goodness! I grew up with two brothers, so I've always wanted to seek out that big sister relationship with somebody. Is that nice? I created an account hoping to find someone who does look like me. Ambrosia may have found a match. I was going through thousands of pictures and I come to her picture and I almost like, <gasps> like, you know, that frightened feeling. I noticed her smile. Our smiles come up the same exact way. Holy shit. Your smile is the same. What the fuck? <laughs> and she's got the same, like, nose. And she's exactly the same skin tone. At least she's pretty. She's very pretty, which means I am extremely pretty too. I'm just complimenting myself. <laughs> Who's that? A mommy. I'm Fiorella. I'm Ambrosia. And, and I'm, I'm a, a doppelganger. <laughs> Fiorella and Ambrosia will be meeting before they compete in the experiment. Also taking part and determined to do well is 25 year old stand up comic Rob, who hails from America. Hi, my name is Rob. It's so nice to meet you. 
His doppelganger story starts with a chance meeting with 27-year-old Israeli Kobe, who, by strange coincidence, is also a stand-up comic. <laughs> was performing in London at one of my comedy shows, and during the intermission, I heard stories about someone who looked really similar to me in the audience, and people were going up to him and congratulating him on my comedy. And they all was like, wow, you've been amazing, I love your stuff, I love your stuff, and I said to all of them, thank you, but I wasn't performing. I remembered, oh, let's take a selfie before we leave. I actually wound up posting that to Facebook. And it went viral. I don't know, 10 million views, 12 million views. Ah, Kobe, twinsy. So good to see you. You're taller than I remember. Ah, <laughs> you're taller than I remember. The huge interest generated by their selfie has given Rob and Kobe a certain confidence in how they'll compare against the other doppelgangers. We got the beard. I think we have a very similar nose, um, yeah, dark should... features. There's no way there could be more alike people than us. No, nope, we're gonna win it. Hells yes, woo! The experiment's moving on to the next major test, using cutting-edge three-dimensional technology. In the internet world, we can't always trust what we see as photos. We've got to judge it ourselves, and this will give us some insight into that. Introducing one of the most advanced facial mapping systems on the planet. A sophisticated photographic technology that takes six pictures simultaneously. Two from the front, two from the left, and two from the right. Allowing an in-depth analysis. We can calculate about 20,000 different points on the face. In such detail that it even gets under its subject's skin to the contours of the face so we can tell how close your nose is, the exact size and shape of all of your features. Perfect, so just keep looking into the top middle one. And in the crosshairs of this technological thoroughbred are Rob and Kobe. Excellent, all right, so here he goes. They have an unwavering confidence in their similarity, I... confirmed by their score in their two-dimensional photograph test. For you on the 2D images, we get a score of 68%. You're up there somewhere between non-identical twins and identical twins. Can they continue their run in the face of cutting-edge three-dimensional science? It's yeah. really hard to tell you guys apart at all on that. You can see under here, uh, when this is taken off the skin, you can see the structure. It's really pretty similar with the folds uh, under the eye. So the 3D score of the eye, you're getting 66%, OK? okay nice. Now let's, let's look at those, those mouths. Uh, without the skin, you can see really the detail here of how different you really are in yeah. both the size and the depth. Okay. It's sort of pouty or lower lip. Yeah. I like to pout. How are you going to score on those, do you think? I'll say like 5%. 6%. 6, good. Yeah. Um, when we put all this together, we come up with a score that is 39%. 3D we did quite poorly. There are more tests to maybe to push the rank up because uh, we want to be in the Champions League this year. Oh yeah. <laughs> Jefferson City, Missouri. An American state which has been at various times home to Chuck Berry, Eminem and Walt Disney. And today it welcomes Fiorella, who has flown from London to meet her identical stranger. I'm nervous, can you tell? Fingers crossed that face to face there is more similarities because she looked quite Asian in the picture. She's going to be here any minute. I'm feeling overwhelmed, but in a good way. <sighs> Thanks, see you soon. Bye. I'm feeling so nervous. <sighs> oh, what the actual fuck? So crazy. like me. <laughs> I'm just staring at you. It's crazy. <laughs> we have like the same. <sighs> yeah. You have you have eyebrows. Yeah. The eyes yeah. And the nose. Yeah. Oh my god. Similar. <laughs> and you're we're not even that different in height at all. We are quite different in height. 
She's quite short, and I'm thinking of the Hobbit. <laughs> She's like the Hobbit, and I'm like Gandalf or something. I didn't know that she was going to be that close in height. I was thinking it was going to be a major difference. Do you want to come in? Of course I want to come in. <laughs> All right. We even have the same double chin, so I have found my doppelganger. She is my doppelganger, face, facially. Just seeing you it reminds me how gorgeous I am. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Fiorella and Ambrosia aren't the only pair of doppelgangers seeing the differences in each other. Is there a part of your doppelganger that you're envious of? Let's have a look at your face. Eyelashes. Of course. His facial hair. She's got nice teeth. <laughs> <laughs> About six inches taller than me. Your butt is really toned, which I'm jealous of because my butt lost its life when I had a child, even though it's still one of my best features, okay? Obviously, it's height. Let's see what else. I'm the Jewish Michael Jordan. It's good to know. Do you want to take my double chin as well? I have one, thank you. My eyebrows, babe. You don't need to like them, you need them. <laughs> Before beginning their tests, Fiorella and Ambrosia's similarity is going to be judged on a personal level. This is a dream come true for me. I always wanted like a sister around my age so we can do this stuff. As the pair get ready to meet Ambrosia's two-year-old daughter, Emma. When we smile, it looks just like each other. Come in. Two-year-old Emma may have been initially fooled, but the tests at St. Thomas's Hospital are a bit more discerning. That's a beautiful smile. Thank, Thank you. you. Fiorella and Ambrosia now begin their quest to be the most identical of strangers. First up, the results of their photograph analysis. So let's look at your um, noses. This was your nose score, which was a really high 89%. Wow. Which is amazing. And if you were identical twins, it'd be about 90, 95%. Good marks, guys, on the noses. But now the question is, how alike are the pair in three dimensions? Now when we start to uh, look at the profiles here, these noses, they start to look a little bit different, a little don't different. they? A little bit different. There's a slightly different angle here, and I think the, the widths are a bit different, aren't they, though, yeah. at some points? So we've gone from a score that was really high on the 2D, it's hard to beat that one, to a 3D score, 43%. <laughs> The mouth, you scored 29% on that, OK? I see. Of course, now we put it all together, you guys yeah. scored 7%. Oh, <laughs> that's horrible. That score is very close to just random people. I'm a bit disappointed. I was hoping for a higher score, considering we scored 50 on the 2D. It really disappointed me, too. I mean, it. I don't think it's true, because obviously we look alike resemble each other a lot. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. At London St. Thomas's Hospital, tests are continuing on pairs of doppelgangers to see who's the most identical. For one pair, it's not just their faces which are alike. Both have jobs in construction, and there's another similarity. Billy Wright from USA. I'm Billy Wright, 23, from Bournemouth. I met the other Billy through Facebook. My wife's cousin went looking for me on Facebook, and he found the other Billy. And he was insisting to that Billy that he had met him before. And I was like, no, no, I've never been to America. It's not me and that. Then left it at that. The other Billy popped up on people you may know on my Facebook page. So I decided to friend him and messaged him and asked him if he thought we looked alike, and he thought the same thing. Everyone's got a twin, don't they? They may have the same name. Hi, guys. 
But now it's time to see how the Billy's faces compare under the scrutiny of three-dimensional analysis. So this is what you look like in 3D. Pretty gorgeous guys, eh? Let's just do <laughs> your skin flattened out. We don't have the shape in there yet, but we can calculate the shape of your faces onto these sort of models. Cool. Okay, you look this way. You can see the foreheads are pretty similar. Yeah. And then the nose, not so similar. Right. The bottom lip, yes, upper lip's quite different. And there are a little bit of differences there on the chin. The eyes, um, actually, were quite similar in you guys. We got a score of 75% on that one. Wow. Because your eye area is so close, that's why I think people look at you and they see it. The amazing similarity and, and we disregard the other bits. The rest of the bits, yeah. Like the Billies, a pattern's beginning to emerge among the pairs. I mean, you could put one of those over the top of the other and you'd hardly notice any difference. The similarity score around one particular feature is consistently high. Well, you were 90%. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. Really undistinguishable from identical twins. Gee, hot. You can hardly tell the difference. I would have thought this is the same nose. Yeah, so you're getting a score of 90% on that. Really? It's like a twin yeah. score. Yes, exactly like a twin <gasps> score. So you have twin noses. <laughs> For Professor Spector, these results are giving an important clue to the central question being asked in his doppelganger experiment. Why these identical strangers, by popular opinion, are seen to look so alike? A lot of these doppelgangers have got some interesting features about them that marks them out, and it might be that our brains are picking up on that unusual thing, and if they share just that one, our brains sort of ignore the rest of it. But it's also reinforcing that view that why you might get people coming up to you and say, oh, you look just like so-and-so. Uh, but that to that person, there are some features that um, click. It's not just the professor who's finding similarities. Spending time together, so are the doppelganger pairs. Do you have any tattoos? I do. Yes, yes I have one tattoo. You do? I do. No, she <laughs> likes cats, I like dogs. So. Yeah. It is baby Minnie Mouse, and it's sitting on my daughter's zodiac sign because she is obsessed with Minnie Mouse. I have um, the date of my aunt's birthday. I think I'm craving, yeah. I think I'm modest. She described herself as a Barbie doll and I'm a breath doll, which I think is pretty accurate. No, OK, I'm vain. <laughs> there you go, I said it. <laughs> The experiment at St Thomas's Hospital is now moving on to its final set of tests. It means all the pairs will come face to face for the first time. It's a chance to size up the competition. Which of them looks the most alike? Yeah, they look quite similar, but do you think it's like so daughter and mother? <laughs> <laughs> Professor Spector is catching up with the results so far. Got a few sort of winners and losers, movers and shakers. Who's the most similar one? David and Darren, their overall face shape, the computer loved that one, and their score was really quite close to twins. Hello. Hello. So we meet at last. <laughs> Hi. We're seeing John and Neil consistently up there. I think the way the ageing has affected them so similarly is absolutely amazing. You do look very similar. Have yeah. you made your hair deliberately similar as well? No, no. Did you do yours similar? <laughs> we don't get a choice. When the thatch goes, you just have to put up with what's left. They're followed by a, a sort of middle pack of people in the low 40%. Who are you? My name is Buck. You're Buck. You're Buck. You're Buck. You're Buck. I'm Buck. And computer's telling us that we're getting some pairs that really aren't similar at all. Fiora, I see you. I'm John. Oh. Hi. Rob and Kobe, they did really well on the individual features in 3D, but I think we're actually much more similar than the computer picked out. I'm confident that we are the most similar of all of us. Sorry about it, that's how it is. There's really similar ones and then there's like some of them I just don't see the resemblance. But then some of them is absolutely insane. It's the eyes that are quite similar. Oh, not Let's, we, can, we can all agree that their name is quite similar. Yeah. <laughs> Your smiles are very similar. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. I was like, wow, you are you, so similar. Yeah, did you see it straight away? Yeah. You're like, there's no competition. It's like, yeah. She wants to win it. Yeah, we're in it too. I'd like to be the most similar. 
I am very confident. I, be I bet a 20 pound note on it. 20 pounds, that's all. You should have made some money. Uh, oh, feel, uh, where, where do you want to bet? Well, tell me what you want to bet. Why? We, we're in the same boat. Why do you want to bet with me? <laughs> bet with us. In the next stage of tests, the doppelgangers face the public. You're going to look at their photographs and you're going to mark them from 1 to 10. Studies show that the best judge of similarity is the human eye. We read faces differently to computers and pick up on other cues. So they're going to first see the 2D photos, judge those, and then go in and see you in real life and rank you. It'd be really fascinating to see what they pick up on, because I think those scores could be different and uh, everything could change. Everyone has a different opinion, and I think this is what's so interesting about this whole area. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and similarity is probably in the eye of the beholder as well. A hundred people have been invited to rate how alike the pairs are. They've got the same colouring, haven't they? Yeah. Wow, they really look alike. They would be the same person. He actually could do a murder, and that one could take the blame. <laughs> Words. Even their teeth. It's spooky, isn't it? <laughs> We're getting an interesting variety. Some people are looking for really picky, looking for subtle differences. And that one's got a baggy eyes. Others are amazed at how similar they are. The little bits of red in the hair, though, are very alike. Yeah. It's reflecting our own personalities, how we view these pictures. So it's like how optimistic or pessimistic it's just showing, we, we, it looks like we're looking at faces in very different ways. That is unusual, that their lips should be so, so similar. Lips and the eyes. One pair's photo scoring well is Neil and John. They look very similar. They could be twins. They could be brothers. Could their similarity be more than coincidence? The pairs have all submitted samples of their DNA so it can be analysed. DNA testing is going to tell us how much they share in terms of their uh, genetic variants and also their origins, their ancestral origins, which could also give clues about why they look the way they do. Carrying out the tests is family historian Brad Argent. His results are of interest to John, whose heritage is rather crooked. I have Viking fingers. My Bent little fingers apparently is said to be a Viking trait. They are known as Viking fingers. But will Neil share the Viking gene? Where you come from might have some bearing on your resemblance, OK? okay? Well, I think I have a, a strong Viking element in my ancestry. Mm -hmm. uh, I carry what's called the Viking finger. Right. And nothing quite so romantic as that. My grandfather was born in Dew well, my maternal grandfather was born in Dewsbury. What was really stunning to me when I compared the two of you, you share almost exactly the same ethnic backgrounds. John, you can see here these darker or filled in colours are where the bulk of your DNA comes from. And when you compare that to Neil's, oh, look yeah. at that. I mean, you, <laughs> you know, you're almost exactly the same. You're ethnically twins, if you like. Look at yeah. that. You could almost put one over the top of the other. But I have to tell you, probably slightly more Viking than John, because you've got a bigger chunk <laughs> of Scandinavian in you. Well, these sort of images, pretty unusual to get two people matching uh, in quite such a way, wouldn't you yeah. agree? I mean, the chances are pretty small of that happening. Yeah, and I'm sort of wondering, is mm. that what's sort yeah. of pushing you to look similar? Another pair catching the crowd's attention with their similarity is David and Darren. These guys almost look like twins, David and Darren. And the best I've seen so far, they've got the same eyes, same nose, same lips. Hello there. Will their DNA analysis reveal a deeper connection? This is your ethnicity estimate, 75% Europe East. Now, that, that includes Poland. OK. But I want to have a look at yours. 96%. 96% Ireland. <laughs> it means Darren and David's ancestry has almost zero similarity. I see the two of you and I just go, how can you be so genetically different mm -hmm. and so obviously physically similar? Similar. The crowd's continuing its own analysis. 
now viewing and scoring the pairs face to face. Smile, smile, is smile, yeah, smile, is smile, is smile. Yeah, definitely yeah. turn. They definitely look more alike than the photos. Yeah. I think their stances sort of make them look a bit more similar. Their posture. Yeah. One pair scoring well with the crowd are 19-year-olds Cherry, a youth worker from Bath, and Puck, a student from Holland. If I saw either Puck or Cherry walking towards me individually on the street, I'd have to ask myself, which is it? Well, very similar. You actually look much more similar than your photographs. Are you sure you're not sisters? Very alike. And they've got the same smiles, look at this. Puck and Cherry's shared mannerisms are connecting with the crowd. For Professor Spector, it's an intriguing insight into how people view similarity in the flesh. And clues to character are very important for the human eye. And so the way people use their hands or whether they're smiling. I have a smile for you, please, yeah. at the same time. <laughs> Rob and Kobe are also scoring highly with the crowd. But with one born in America and the other from Israel, could their similarity be more than skin deep? Could they actually be related? We'll start with you, Rob. Hey, Jewish and, you know, Italian, Greek. But let's have a look at yours, Kobe, and just see how those two things compare. Right? Boom. So, again, there's this is strong <laughs> Italy, Greece connection, which could be why there's some kind of similarity, certainly in skin tone. Do you think you could be related? Let's see. I would just say that my father was a sailor when he was a young man. <laughs> the answer is that you are related, yeah. roughly of the order of fourth cousins. <laughs> really? It does mean that there is some reason, in a way, that you're sharing some of your attributes. So there you go, guys. Yeah. Very surprising. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm shocked. Rob and Kobe's similar looks could potentially trace back to their great, great, great grandparents. With the perception test almost complete, scores from this test will now be combined with the others to find which pairs will be crowned the world's most identical strangers. As the count begins, it gives the doppelganger pairs a chance to reflect on the time they've spent together. I don't look at him as a, uh, my doppelganger. It's just, you know, a friend. The first time we met, it just, yes, we were friends, Kobe. OK, give me a hug. When I first seen her, you feel like you know them, so you're kind of trustworthy and you're, like, friendly with them. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like going to school with somebody since kindergarten. We're friends on Facebook, Snapchat. And, yeah. uh, she gives me my strength when we're out and about. He's encouraged my writing, enabled me to write my first real poem. It's weird. It has sound like we're lovers now, be careful. You go through life thinking, oh, actually, I might have sex with someone who looks like me, but when you actually meet that person, you go, ew! Finally, after days of testing, it's time for the twin stranger pairs to discover which of them science considers the most similar. Hi, everybody. All of you, seven pairs, have been amazing. There was, there was something about all of you that was quite unique and special. All of you actually have got one feature, at least, that is just like identical twins. Scientifically, we are going to carry this on. There are a lot of psychologists interested in what makes people look at different bits of faces. What I want to do now is reveal who of you is the most identical stranger pair? At first glance, I think we have the strongest look. I think we're going to do very bad. <laughs> I feel quite confident, really. You've got this one in the bag. Yeah. Mm-hmm, pretty much. <laughs> With us, people see it or they don't see it. We don't actually think we look that much alike, but other people do. Yeah. First, we thought we'd be top three. I'm thinking oh. maybe <laughs> maybe top five now. Sarah's a little bit competitive, so she wants us to win the thing. I'm going to go through the, the test, starting with the 2D computer images. 
pair that came first were John and Neil. For the 3D images, things were different. The pair that came first were David and Durham. Moving on to the crowd test, so now we start to add in the human element. The pair that came first were Rob and Kobe. <laughs> so taking these scores all together, I'm going to reveal now which of you pairs is the most identical twin stranger. That honour goes to John and Neil. Congratulations, guys. Thank you very much. So let's just be honest, I'd rather be the best one from the scientific, scientific point of view yeah, yeah. rather than what, what people thought. from, you know, people's judgment. <laughs> the court of popular opinion said that we were the most identical. So screw science, that's all that matters is people's opinions. In the past, doppelgangers used to be a thing just of film and science fiction, but now with the internet, we'll be seeing this more and more. It's going to be much more of a phenomenon. Amazed. Totally gobsmacked. Yeah. You Absolutely. didn't expect it. Yeah. Didn't yeah. expect yeah. it. We're never going to live this down <laughs> in Braintree. <laughs>